In this video, I'm going to show you how to make professional templates in Affinity Photo. If you aren't familiar with the basics of how templates work though, I'll leave a link in the video description for our introductory tutorial to templates. I've also left a link for a set of free Affinity templates, as well as the photos we'll be practicing with today. To practice making templates, We'll create a MacBook Pro template that allows us to put whatever image we want on this screen. To begin our template, we're going to mask out the computer screen. We can do this with the pen tool. So press P for the pen tool. Then change your mode to polygon mode, which makes it so you only draw straight lines with the pen tool. Then you can zoom in and click to lay down nodes around the outer edge of the MacBook screen. And if you ever need to adjust any of the nodes, hold down Command or Control, and then you can move them around. When you're done, you can turn the path into a selection from the context toolbar. Then we can zoom back out by pressing Command or Control-0. Now we'll turn the selection into a mask by pressing on the mask icon. Now this mask is the exact opposite of what we want. We want the screen masked out, but right now we have everything but the screen masked out. So let's deselect by pressing Command or Control D. And then we can click on the Mask Layers icon to select the mask. Then we can invert the mask by pressing Command or Control I. Perfect! We now have just the screen masked out. As an optional step, I'm going to double click on this layer and rename it to MacBook. Naming layers helps to keep your work organized, which is especially important when making templates. The next thing we need to do is create the embedded document that will replace our masked out laptop screen. To do this, we first need to know how big our embedded document should be. Fortunately, since this is a 15 inch MacBook Pro, we can use Google to look up how big its screen is. It looks like a 15 inch MacBook Pro screen is 2880 by 1800 pixels. Back in Affinity, we can press Command or Control N to start a new document. Under the Web category, set your document size to 2880 by 1800. Then press Create. We now have a document that's exactly the right size for our MacBook Pro screen. But don't worry if you need to create a template for something that doesn't have an exact size you can look up. We'll learn about a different technique you can use at the end of this video. Now we can place any photo we want inside of this document by using the Place option from the File menu. You can use any photo you want, since this is just a placeholder image, to help us see what we're doing as we create our template. Now we'll save this document by going to File, Save As. After the document is saved, you can close out of it. Now we're going to embed the document we just saved into the MacBook document. To do this, use the Place feature from the File menu. As you can see from the Layers panel, this file is now embedded. I'll show you why that's important in a minute. For now, we need to line up our embedded document with where the MacBook screen should be. 
To do this, I'll begin by lowering its layer opacity so that I can see what I'm doing. Then we'll use the perspective filter, which allows us to change the layer size and perspective. Now we just need to line up these perspective nodes with the corners of the laptop screen. Make sure the embedded document completely covers the masked out area. Once you've positioned the layer correctly, you can bring its opacity back up to 100%. Then we'll place this layer underneath the MacBook's layer. Now the photo fits perfectly into the screen area. To keep our template organized, I'm going to label this layer as your photo, since this is where your chosen photo will go. Let's zoom out to see how our template is looking. As you can see, the photo has been placed perfectly inside of the laptop screen, but it still doesn't look very realistic. Fortunately, there's a few things you can do to make it look better. The first thing we'll do is match the coloring of our two layers. You'll notice that the main photo is a little bluish and unsaturated. On the other hand, our laptop screen is warm and vibrant. That wouldn't happen in a real photo. To make the colors match, we have two options. We could make the laptop screen bluer and less saturated, or we could make the main photo warmer and more saturated. Personally, I like warmer photos, so let's make the main photo warmer. First, we'll apply a white balance adjustment. Then we can make the photo warmer. We want this layer to affect the main photo though, and not the laptop screen. So we'll make it a child layer to the MacBook by dragging it down and to the right. That's already done a lot to help match the two layers colors. But let's make a few more tweaks to make it look even better. Next, we'll apply an HSL adjustment and increase the saturation. Then we'll apply a brightness and contrast adjustment and increase the contrast. Now our layers are matching much better. Our template still doesn't look quite right though. That's because there's no light reflecting off the laptop screen. To replicate light reflecting off the screen, we're going to make a white rectangle. Place the rectangle in between our two layers. Then resize and position it. Next, apply a Gaussian Blur filter to the rectangle. If you want the blur to go above 100 pixels, just type a number into this box. Then, lower the rectangle's opacity to whatever you think looks good. I think that looks much better. To keep our template organized, I'll rename this layer to Light Reflection. Now that our design is looking good, I want to show you the power of embedded documents. If we ever want to change the photo inside of this layer, all we need to do is select the layer and then double click on its layer icon. Then we can place any photo we want into this document. Once we're done placing the photo, our main document will automatically be updated. 
but for now, we actually want to delete the photo that's inside the embedded document. That way, our MacBook template will be a blank slate, ready for us to put in any photo we want. Now, all that's left to do is export this file as a template, which you can do from the File menu. If you want to learn how to import and organize templates, check out the video I've linked to in the video description. To finish this video, I have one more important thing to teach you. In this video, we were able to look up the exact size of a MacBook Pro screen, but what if you didn't know how big to make your embedded document? To solve this problem, I first want to show you what to do with a simpler photo. In this example, where the photo is shot straight on and doesn't need any perspective warping, you can make a rectangle that's the size of the area you want to cover. You can even lower its opacity to better see what you're doing. Once you're done resizing the rectangle, you can use the transform panel to see how big it is. Then you can make an embedded document that's that exact size. Unfortunately, things get more difficult when you need to worry about perspective, as we do in our MacBook Pro template. You can begin the same way, by using a rectangle to try and gauge how big your embedded document should be. Just match up the rectangle with the area you want to fill, and then make a new document based on how big the rectangle is. In the new document, add a placeholder image, and then save the file. Then we can place the file into our MacBook document. Now we'll lower its opacity and use the perspective filter to line it up with the screen. Now comes the tricky part. We use the perspective filter to force our embedded document into this area, but while doing so, we may have distorted our image. So now, you need to evaluate with your eyes. Has the photo become distorted? Is it too wide? Is it too narrow? Or does it look just right? In this case, our model is looking wider than she actually is, so we need to make our embedded layer taller. Now the model looks the way she should, but if we place the embedded layer at the top of the layers panel, you can see we actually have quite a bit of our photo being cut off. Having part of the photo cut off does not make a good template. To fix this, we need to make a new embedded document. As you saw, we needed to make our embedded layer taller in order to make it look right. So you might think that our new document needs to have a taller height. But in fact, we need to make the document's width larger. And if we had needed to make the embedded layer wider, we would need to make the new document have a larger height. Weird, I know. After you've created the new document, you will need to repeat the same process as before to see if this newly sized document works correctly. At this point, I'm satisfied with how the embedded layer looks, so I could move on with making the rest of my template. But if yours still doesn't look quite right, you might need to repeat this process a third time. 
as you can see, it's much easier if you can look up how big your embedded document should be. But even in the worst case situation, you can still make it work. Well, thanks for watching, my friends, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.